A portion of this video, by the way, is an ad for Raid Shadow Legends. So, you're building yourself a stream PC. So you've watched all the benchmarks on the new third gen Ryzen processors on Linus Tech Tips, on Bitwit, and while you feel you have a good understanding of their actual value, you have no real world understanding of what kind of stream that will actually get you. What's the max resolution I can stream on a Ryzen 3? Do I need a Ryzen 9 if I want dope alerts? And what quality of stream will that CPU get me? Well, today we built two PCs for you. A Ryzen 3 build with a $95 3200G and a Ryzen 5 build with a $194 3600G. To see how far we can go. Welcome back to the Alpha Gaming Channel. I'm Lemonade, and today we're going to build you the perfect budget streaming PC. Before we get started, I want to give a huge thank you to the sponsor of this video, Raid Shadow Legends, an incredibly ambitious RPG product that just released. Raid is one of the most immersive gaming experiences you can find on a smartphone, and it's entirely free. It's got all the features you'd expect from a new RPG title, like an amazing storyline, awesome 3D graphics, giant boss fights, PvP battles, and hundreds of champions to collect and customize. I've been playing it throughout the day today, and I'm impressed at the amount of performance it can put into a mobile game. It's only been out about three months, and already about 10 million people are playing it. The details in the champions are pretty incredible. My champion of choice at the moment is Athel, though that might just uh, say a little bit more about my taste in strong women. There's something in this game for everyone, whether it's upgrading characters or deep storylines or graphics, and the game has almost a perfect score on the Play Store with over 200,000 reviews. The game's growing incredibly fast and they've already added a couple new updates to it, including a rewards program. This includes rewards for logging in daily during the first 90 days you have the game. Personally, I get pretty hooked with the level up mechanics in games like this, and of course the collector inside of me gets excited every time I unlock a new champion. You can find me in the game under the nickname Harris Heller, and if you join fast enough, you can join my clan, Clan We Win these, best clan in the game. So what are you waiting for? Go to the description below, click on the special link to get 50,000 silver as well as a free epic champion as a part of their new player program. Good luck and uh, I'll see you there. Thanks again to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this part. Now on to the rest of the video. The real goal of this video is to find real world solutions and actually see what kind of stream you can make with each CPU and budget. So we built a streaming benchmark test. And if you like this video and you want to see more videos like that in the future, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Also, I stream every Monday, Wednesday, Friday on Twitch. Link is in the description down below. How it works is we start out with a basic bare bones stream. So we're going to start with the 3200G, the Ryzen 3 model. But what we've set up over here, we've got what we're calling the stream benchmark test where we set our bottom line. We did some testing and we found the bottom line, which is using the bare minimum, so static overlays, uh, no alerts, uh, no crossfades or stinger transitions, just two scenes and a cut transition. And we found that we could do in 720p 60 frames per second, which is probably what you're aiming for anyway on a budget build. And we could do it on, uh, what were we on, faster? Faster. Faster. Yeah, we're in the, we're using the encoder faster and we're dropping no frames. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add like one by one elements to this that require a little bit more resources. So adding things like uh, an animated background to the intermission screen, adding alerts, added animated alerts, adding multiple alerts happening on the screen at one time, you know, stinger transitions, things like that, just to see how far we can push it. And with each PC, both the Ryzen 3 and the Ryzen 5 that we built today, we're gonna see what the optimal stream is for both and, and really what the difference in performance on each one is. And the baseline stream right now for the Ryzen 3 is actually looking pretty solid. Uh, it's, a, it's definitely a, a viable stream. So the stream's running right now, streaming to an account. We haven't dropped a single frame yet and we've been going for about 10 minutes. So let's fire off a couple of these static alerts and let's try jumping back and forth between C and C if we drop any frames. There's our fancy static alert. You can see no drop frames. One of the things we did for this is we set every single, we use stream elements by the way, and we're using every single alert in the same alert widget box so that way if someone follows and someone subscribes and someone drops bits, they don't overlap each other, they just go right in sequential order so you don't have more than one alert happening on the screen at a time. For example, I'll, I'll drop this off and then I'll also hit a host alert and it won't go until this one finishes. And there we go, and there we got the host. So because there's only one alert going at a time, again, it's not gonna like overload your system at all. And still haven't dropped a single frame. Let's jump back and forth between scenes. Cool, no drop frames. Baseline is set, let's start adding things. Adding a fade transition, so let's see what it looks like. There we go. Any drop frames? Zero. Next, we're gonna do animated alerts. Got a solid animated alert. No drop frames. Now we're going to set up multiple alerts at a time and see if that really kills us. We dropped two render frames. Do it again. 
Render frames happen every once in a while. Yeah. We dropped two when it started this one. Oh, and we just dropped a few more. Okay, all right. Yeah, so setting off multiple alerts at a time causes some frame drops. 0.1% of all the frames, 11 frames total. I don't think that's a big deal. No, what else do we got? What else is the, what are the next tests? Just added a stinger transition and we're gonna go ahead and test it out. Not a dropped frame. Let's go. Let's let's you wanna just try to break it? You wanna set off yeah. two alerts and a stinger transition yeah, and let's see what happens? Let's also change real quick, let's change the overlay to uh, an animated overlay. Go for it. Oh no, that was bad. Just for like a, a real world test. So let's say like obviously more, more than one alert is bad. So if you're running this setup, you only have them set to go off one at a time, but there's an alert going when you have a stinger transition going. Just do, just hit the, uh, just hit the cheer and while I do the transition, okay. let's see how it goes. Three. Not a single drop frame. Another interesting tidbit we found out is that higher end capture cards seem to add no extra load to the PC. There we go. Let's give this one a shot. No drop frames? Zero. Are these, is a heftier capture card not harder on the system? I don't know. It, uh, I mean, there's no, no difference. I mean, that was a total of how many, Okay, 2% of drop frames, but I guess that's been running for a little bit. So it's like 80, 80, 80 drop frames total, dropping a ton of a ton of alerts. That's pretty good. So if you end up upgrading to something like a 1440p, 144 hertz setup, and want to mirror your gameplay to your capture card for optimal performance, you can actually throw in a 4K60 Pro and be just fine. Not my keyboard. Moving on to the Ryzen 5, this build was exactly the same except for the upgraded CPU and an added $40 GT710 GPU, which was necessary since the 3600 does not have onboard integrated graphics. Ryzen 3. Ryzen 5. The total build was $494, and immediately we noticed a pretty big improvement in its encoding capabilities. Harris just got the craziest crossbow kill. You got him, dude, you got him, this is it. Yes! <laughs> oh, Where's it sticking out of him? So he's gonna keep playing it out, and while he's doing that, I'm gonna keep adding stuff to the stream and uh, increasing the resource requirements. Can I just push it all the way up? Push it all the way up? Yeah. We're gonna see what it can do. The Ryzen 5 was able to run medium encoding speed at about 20% CPU usage. We threw everything at it, including multiple alerts during a string of transition without dropping a single frame, and it was impressive. Alerts and intermission, everything. Did all three? Not a single drop frame. Okay guys, Harris is very emotionally invested in this game, so we pushed it to the limit. I hit every single alert and a stinger transition, still 1.4 millisecond uh, render time, and uh, not a single, not a drop, single frame. drop frame, dude. By the way, we ran all these tests at a bit rate of 4,500 kilobits per second, and we did it for a reason. I get a lot of viewers asking me what resolution and bit rate they should stream at, and there's a reason I tell people not to go above 4,500 and uh, generally 900p. And that's because while Twitch is capable of going up to 6,000, and yes, it will make your stream look a little bit crisper, when you're not a partner, you don't often have transcoding options. And what that means is your viewers, if they're watching you, they're required to watch your stream in the full resolution that you're streaming at. So if you're streaming at 6,000 kilobits per second, they're forced to watch it at 6,000 kilobits per second. And if you have any viewers with a remotely slow internet speed, they're gonna be buffering a lot. When I was still affiliate, I had a lot of viewers that were buffering when I pushed my bitrate up to 6,000. But when I lowered my resolution down to 1600 by 900, which is a very minor difference to the eye, but it cuts out about a third of the pixels your PC has to push, allowing you some headroom to really lower the bitrate down to 4,500 without seeing a noticeable difference in quality. All those viewers that were experiencing buffering immediately had a super smooth stream. So it's not that I think the 900p 4,500 looks better, but for me as a viewer, I would much rather experience like a, a negligible slight drop in image quality than I would experience buffering over and over again. So keep that in mind. 
totally up to you. As for the Ryzen 5 build, we found a couple things that really optimized that PC for a solid stream. There were two things that really increased the CPU usage on here that I would recommend staying away from if you wanna keep that extra headroom and make sure you never drop frames. The first one is an animated overlay. Turning on that animated overlay jumped our render time up to 17 milliseconds. I just switched it back to the animated overlay. And that just, it just spikes up to 16 milliseconds when that's all I change. All right, I guess you have a pretty good answer there. Don't stream with, if you're on a budget system, don't use an animated overlay. Especially when you're on your gameplay screen where dropped frames are going to be the most noticeable thing in the middle of the action, I would go with a static overlay for this budget build. And it's not really that big of a deal either. Most well-designed streams in 2019 have kind of gone away from serious, crazy animated overlays, they've gone to a very simple, sleek design. I don't even use an animated overlay on my gameplay screen. I just have a thin white border. However, sitting in your intermission screen, you're not gonna have as much action and movement. And if your stream drops a frame or two, it's not a big deal. Having a nice, subtle animated overlay in your intermission screen seems to be just fine. Another strange thing is that we noticed there was almost no CPU peak when we went from 720p to 900p, but for some reason going from 900p to 1080p, CPU overload. I mean, it increased the render time in frames from like four milliseconds to 14 milliseconds. I would probably stick to 900p as a max. I would also change your canvas size to 900p. But yeah, outside of that, this PC pretty much handled everything like a champ. We were encoding at medium and it looked super crisp. Wait, where'd my chips go? Terrace, leave your chips upstairs. Guys, this is what I have to deal with day in and day out, is this man heating his, no. Excuse me. So there are lots of options if you're a streamer on a budget. If you'd like our opinion, and keep in mind it is only our opinion, this is what we would do if we were on a budget. Save yourself some cash and start off with a Ryzen 3 build. Yeah, early on in your streaming career, peripherals like a solid mic, uh, camera, lighting, all those kind of things are gonna be much more beneficial for the viewer than uh, some slightly upgraded encoding options that you'd get with a, a Ryzen 5. After you're done with your stream setup upgrades and wanna beef up your PC a little more, you can slap a GTX 6060 in that machine, turning into an absolute beast and keeping the total price under $600. <laughs> Gosh, dude, you're killing me. Oh my gosh. It's your turn to speak. NVIDIA's new NVIDIA encoder is pretty comparable to X264 Medium. So not only will you be getting a quality upgrade by switching over to NVENC, but also moving that encoding from your Ryzen 3 over to the GPU is gonna free up your CPU to handle all those extra processes like WebM alerts or overlays, allowing you to just a lot more headroom for uh, for the design aspect of your stream. We actually did a video on a GTX 1660 build a couple weeks ago, link like, Link after, right at, the, at the end right of the video. Okay. That thing was an absolute workhorse. We threw everything we could at it and it still had a ton of headroom and we were only using the second gen Ryzen processor on it. This is a third gen. Okay. Can I have my back? Yep. You can have Anyways guys, I hope this helped. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to hit me up in my Twitch chat. Again, link is in the description down below. Also, we have a massive community on Discord. Join our Discord. There are a lot of people in there that want to help. You can talk to people, talk about setups. Yep, and builds like this. Yeah. And as always, Happy streaming. Oh my gosh, dude, stop that. It's so infuriating. Happy streaming, guys. <laughs>